Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. You know, Eddie, one game left on the regular season at home against 13th ranked Iowa State. And we should say right now, that's a 6.30 game in case you haven't heard. Hopefully you have by now, but a 6.30 tip off at Gallagher Ibar Arena. No question, been a tough season. We've said that week after week, but every time you step on the court, there's something to play for. Well, that game I might also add is uh, being nationally televised by ESPN. Uh, you know, last week when we did this show, we had won two games, and it's a lot easier to do these TV shows when <laughs> know. You're, you're victorious. But uh, this past week, we uh, played the University of Oklahoma in Norman, a very, very good basketball game for 31 minutes, and the game's tied. And then we make some mistakes, and they play a little bit better, and they beat us. And then we go to uh, Lincoln uh, midweek and play maybe one of the best has of basketball we've played all year and we're up 40 to 30 at halftime and uh, then they came out the second half played better and we missed some shots and we get beat again uh, I told my assistant coaches I'm doing a heck of a job coaching the first <laughs> half but you guys aren't holding up your end of the bargain no not really but uh, it's been a tough season because of the number of uh, injuries we've had but the one thing I'm proud of our players can continue to really compete hard you know they haven't thrown in the towel we've got the cyclone Saturday evening and uh, that's always a, uh, a good game. We've always had great games with Iowa State, especially since Tim Floyd went up there. And uh, they are currently ranked 13th. They're one of the top teams in our league, a senior ball club. And uh, by the way, it's our last game, so it's senior night for Keontae Roberts and Marlon Dorsey and uh, Maurice Robinson. Well, we have indeed spent a lot of time on the road the last couple of weeks. We'll take you to Norman and Lincoln when the Eddie Sutton Show returns after these messages. Hi, welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show from the Control Room. I'm Wade Pearson, director of the show. Now let's get you back out to the set with Eddie and Tom. The by two and two's up, my cue. How about that? You know, we got all kinds of people show up on, and Wade does a great job pushing all the buttons and helping us stay together each and every week. Eddie, with a healthy squad, the stretch of four games and 14 days, that would have been a test, even with a full roster. And the Cowboys, with a smaller roster, really was stressed over these last two weeks. I would agree with that. I've never uh, had a season quite like this, and then, uh, I hope I never have one again. <laughs> but uh, it, they call this the Bedlam Series when you uh, get together with the University of Oklahoma. I, I don't know where they came up with that game or that name, uh, but many years ago it was. It's, uh, they said it's the Bedlam Series, and it truly is a wild affair. I mean, we've had some unbelievable games with the Sooners uh, since I came back, and I can remember when I was a player here, we had some great games, but. The biggest crowd to ever see a basketball game in uh, Norman, uh, and we we come out and really play well and jump out early, and that's what you want to do when you're playing on the road and take that crowd out of the game. But they fought back, and it was just a nip and tuck affair up the entire first, like I said, 31 minutes, and we just finally uh, ran out of gas. The uh, tank got empty, and uh, they were able to go past us. I think that's a thing that's disappointing when you have a squad that is so crippled up that you can play for a while. Uh, and if you were playing a high school game, 32 minutes, you might have a chance. But 40 minutes is a long ways to go when you're not any deeper in the front line than we are. But uh, as I said earlier, our guys have really continued to play hard. And, and uh, I think a season like this, I've had so many great years that uh, when the great years return, well, you'll appreciate it more. You know, as far as the execution of the game plan, I thought the first half against Oklahoma, the first half against Nebraska, was probably as good as we have done all year long. Well, we did execute well, and uh, at both ends of the floor, uh, we control the tempo of the game, uh, and that's what you want to do when you play on the road, you try to shorten the game a little bit, and uh, we did that. We isolated Keanu Roberts, like right uh, there, you see him moving through the basket where you create a one-on-one -on -one situation, and he's extremely good when you can do that. Uh, and we ran what we call a cowboy series where you cut people to the basket. And uh, I just thought our players really executed extremely well. It just uh, it got down to the latter stage of the game and we uh, just uh, were fatigued. You know, sitting right next to you during the uh, broadcast, I could see you talking to your assistants as the game wore on. You said it two or three times to Sean, I think, that, hey, I could see them starting to drag a little bit, starting to become fatigued. Well, you know, you always coach a game better after it's over. And uh, I think I told you that if I had to do it over again, when we got to that 10-minute mark uh, to go in the ball game, I would have switched to a zone defense because uh, 
Uh, I just felt like that, uh, you know, when you play man, it's more tiring, and it just looked like some of our guys' legs were going. And, and you got to give Oklahoma some credit. They, they came in late in the ball game, hit some big trays on us. I think they had four or five three-pointers. And when that ball goes through the basket, it camouflages all your shortcomings. And uh, uh, when they go in, well, it has a tendency to uh, – when they don't go in, it just uh, really magnifies your problem. There's Alonzo Mays. <laughs> uh, we, he called me and said, Coach, I think I can help the ball club. And of course, for people that might not know who he is, he's a first-team all-conference uh, tight end for Oklahoma State University. He was a great high school player at Douglas High in o Oklahoma City. And he came out on Friday and he played on Saturday. And uh, when he came in and he told me, he said, I think I can help the team. I said, well, you get permission from Coach Simmons. And I said, I think you can help the team, but I don't think you'll be quite ready until next Wednesday we play the Cornhuskers. He said, well, that'll be all right. I said, I know their players. Well, he practices one day, and we put him in the game against the University of Oklahoma the next day. And, you know, he's, uh, that'll be something he can tell his grandchildren. He said, you know, I played in the Bedlam Series in basketball. And, and he, got, he, he actually uh, got found his way on the stat sheet, got a got, point got and a, a rebound. And a foul. So he was able to find himself in a couple of columns on that box score. Now, he had a couple of days more to practice before we went to Lincoln. It was a snowy day in Lincoln, no question about that. But Alonzo came in, and again, he and McQuarters really gave the Cowboys a lift off the bench. Well, if we'd had uh, both those guys for uh, a longer period of time, uh, they would really be contributing now. Uh, RW has probably been out now about a little over two weeks, and as we mentioned, uh, Alonzo just came out last week. Great pass by... Uh, Keanu Roberts to Brett Robish, and he displayed his great hands by catching that one. That shot right there, the clock was running down, and Keanu just threw it up, and it happened to go in. I thought Brett Robish had uh, perhaps the best game that he's had uh, this season. He had 24 points and eight rebounds and, and played pretty sound defense. I know we all hope it's a preview of things to come. Well, I think he's got a chance to be a very good uh, center next year for us. He's had good days. Another great catch by him, nice high-low pass. Peterson had 14 points in the first half, and uh, uh, Keanu Roberts had seven rebounds. In the second half, those two guys got neutralized. Now, that's a shot by RW I'm not sure we want to take. I didn't think he was on balance, but yet Robich gets the ball back, kicks it out to Peterson, and he hits a three-pointer. Another good high-low pass. There again, execution-wise, I don't know that we played a whole lot better if we played any better at one stretch than we did in the first half at Lincoln. This phrase from Joe Atkins driving to the basket. He was set up by a nice penetration play by Roberts. There's Mays. They're in a the zone and you catch that ball in a high post from one side. You try to go high low. If it's not there, you try to fan the ball back to the weak side and that's what he did. Good follow shot by Marlon Dorsey. We yeah. played a trick defense and it really worked the first half. We played a box and one. I, you know, until uh, the last two games, I'd never played in 38 years of coaching, a triangle and two or a box and one, or you know, as Dale Brown at LSU calls them freak defenses. But this defense really actually worked quite well in that first half because they've got a great guard in Lou, and we really neutralized him. The quarters did a good job on Lou for the time he spent on him in the box and chaser. But like all good coaches and teams, if you see it enough in one half, you're gonna figure a way to get inside or get something done against it in the second half. That's what Nebraska did. Well, Danny Nina's his staff at halftime, I think, uh, said we've got to get the ball inside as you try to do against any defense. And the first half, we had them passing the ball around the perimeter. The second half, they did get the ball inside. Great effort on the uh, offensive board there by Robertson and, and Robish. Brent was just outstanding, and uh, he had some big shots in the second half. And again, it was like the Brent Robish show right there. We start the second half. They have possession, the first possession. They uh, have a miscue. We go back down, go high low again, and, and he scores, gets fouled. We're up 13 points uh, with about 19 minutes to go in the game. You mentioned it uh, looked like we were glued to the floor much of the second half defensively. When fatigue sets in, you sometimes can, and people that uh, watch basketball, you can watch those legs, guys start holding their knees and pulling at their shorts and, uh, and start standing around and getting in a wreck position instead of getting down in a defensive stance. And They caught us at about the 10 minute mark. Uh, they tried several different defenses and I thought we did a good job. First half we only turned it over twice, second half we turned it over eight times. Ten times in a game against a good ball club like Nebraska is not that many, but when you, uh, your defensive lapses uh, start occurring and then your turnovers and then you don't shoot the ball quite as well, well that's when you get in trouble. Nice drive by uh, RW. 
Well, he, I think he really relished he that the challenge, didn't he, to take on Lou? He, I tell you, R.W., uh, I really believe in that we play Iowa State uh, Saturday and then we go to the Big 12 tournament. I think he's going to play more and more. He started getting in better shape and he has a better understanding. So in this game, I thought he just was a fierce competitor. You mentioned uh, two games in a row now you've had to use a, a other, something other than a man-to-man. Do you like the box and one any better? Now, not the results necessarily, but just the way it can change the tempo of a game. I think you really want me to try your <laughs> triangle in two. You know, I said this last week. He used to coach high school basketball, and he said that triangle in two would really work for me. And uh, we may try that up at the Big 12 tournament. We've yet to use it, though. I mean, it's still sitting there in mothballs. But, hey, we've got some games left, and that's the major deal. Our main defense is man-to-man, -man, but when you're as thin as we are, uh, we will try anything, and of course we'll play a little two-on-two -two zone, but uh, we played box one against Nebraska, and for a while it really worked. You know, from time to time, we received some requests to run some old features of past shows, past years, and really we should start honoring those requests a little bit more, but we will do it this week. We're going to take out one of the all-time favorites for obvious reasons. That's all coming up when we return to the Eddie Sutton Show. As we talked about last week, it's never too early to start thinking about those basketball camps, and we will run that from time to time, let you know how you can uh, get your name in, uh, on the register and get up here and take part in the Eddie Sutton basketball camps this summer. And again, that number, in case you did not see it, it's 744 uh, 744-5845. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have them going to the wrong camps here. 744-5845, area code 405. Now, one, of the, one of the highlights of my uh, year, I really enjoy working with young people, and I, you know, we've had a lot of fun. I had one of the first basketball camps back in 1959 at Tulsa Central. That's a long time ago. How many kids came to that camp? We had about 100. Yeah, see, I knew you'd come up with just a triple figure. So I'm going to go check on that. You know, when you talk about teams peaking, this is when you want to have your team playing the best basketball all year long, when you hit postseason play. 1994-95, Oklahoma State was right there. That was a year that left many Cowboy fans standing on top of the world. <laughs>
That brings back a lot of pleasant memories. You know, <laughs> that team won the Big 8 tournament, which is now the Big 12. And then he went on in the NCAA. They beat Drexel. They beat an outstanding Alabama mm -hmm. team. They beat uh, Wake Forest, Duncan. Then they beat Mass to get to the Final Four. And, of course, UCLA beat us in Seattle in the Final Four. But that was an outstanding group of uh, young men and also great basketball players. Of course, country now is really playing well for Vancouver. Uh, Randy's over in Europe playing. Uh, Terry Collins is finishing up his engineering degree. Uh, Andre Owens is finishing up his degree. And uh, Scott Pierce is coaching over Sepulpa High School. And they've got an outstanding ball club over there. So those guys, uh, I would like to suit them up Saturday afternoon, <laughs> one or two of them against Iowa State. I think our chances would be much better. Tim Floyd might protest if he saw some of those guys come out on the court on Saturday night. Now, the notebook, nationally ranked Iowa State, both are still ahead. We'll discuss both when we return to the Eddie Sutton Show after this short timeout. Welcome back to the show. You can see we're discussing the seeding and all that for next week's tournament, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, let's get right to the notebook now. We've got a couple items that we want to touch upon. Saturday night, Iowa State, senior night, senior send-off. Three seniors. Bo Robinson won't be in uniform, but he'll be there, and of course we honor not only the student-athlete, but their parents that walk out with them for the last time, Keontae Roberts and Marlon Dorsey. And of course we'll be entertaining the Iowa Psych. Clones, Iowa State Cyclones at 6:30. Let's talk about the tournaments now. I don't care where the tournaments are; it breathes new life into a basketball season. Everybody gets excited because it's starting over, whether you won them all or lost them all. Your records go out the window, and of course, the only true way to get a ticket to the NCAA tournament is to win the conference tournament. And uh, we did that two years ago. Uh, this year, it's a little more difficult because. Uh, Eight teams are going to have to win four games mm -hmm. in a row, which is very, very hard to do. Uh, there'll be four teams get buys, but it all starts Thursday afternoon. Uh, it looks like we're probably going to play uh, that first game at 12 o'clock, kick it off. And our opponents, uh, everybody has one game left, but it looks like we're either going to play uh, Missouri, uh, Baylor, or the University of Nebraska. Okay, you were right on target. Early on, you said the infusion of the new teams from the Southwest Conference would make this a tougher conference basketball-wise, and it has. Well, there were a lot of people uh, that felt like when the four teams came in that they would be a welcome addition in a lot of sports, but maybe not so much in men's basketball. And I told them, I said, hey, I made 11 trips down there to those places <laughs> when I was coaching the Razorbacks, and I knew the University of Texas and Texas Tech were for real, and they could play with anybody in our conference a year ago. And I think Baylor has been a, a pleasant surprise. You got a great player in Skinner and uh, Texas A&M. Those two schools are going to elevate their program. Right now, the Big 12 is one of the elite conferences in, in men's basketball, and, and along with all the other sports we have. I think it truly is one of the two or three best conferences uh, in the country. You know, we talk about Iowa State coming in very quickly. They, too, have a lot to play for. They want to finish third, and they want to stay in that lower half of the bracket and not have to take on Kansas till on Sunday afternoon. Well, they got a great player in Willoughby. I'll be surprised if he's not an all-conference performer. they got one of your favorites, Pratt. they got a great shot blocker in Cato, <laughs> Bankhead. Uh, Edwards uh, got a very fine basketball team. Okay, remember the regular season finale is coming up on Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. Gallagher Ive Arena, Oklahoma State, nationally ranked Iowa State. We will see you there. For Eddie Sutton, Tom Dorado, see you here next week.